what's the last thing you'll hear from me? This gun in my hand. A tenement department in Hex Pantry. Mrs. Cotswold washes breakfast dishes as her husband slips on his jacket. You gonna be working late tonight? Julie's got that chorus recital thing after school. Be nice if we could both be there. I'll try. Depends whether LaRouche needs us for something. All right, I can't argue with the boss. You got everything for work? Got your gat? You got the razor down your sock? Ted, you forgot again. Right here on the kitchen counter next to the bread box. What did I forget? Your sap. How are you gonna bust Ted's without this? Ah, oh, jeez. You're right. Thanks for reminding me, Kala. Hey, goodbye, honey. Have a good day. Soup meat. Let's hustle. I'm coming. I had to hurry my breakfast because service was slow. At the automat? How can service be slow? There's either something ready behind a little window or you find something at a different window. They didn't have none of them little sausage links I like. Plenty of bacon and eggs, but you gotta wait around if you want links. Well, you can explain to Mr. LaRouche you're late because you're too picky to eat bacon. Next time, I'm gonna be on time to work and you can catch a cab. Keep your eye on the road. If you avoid Verf Street, we can still get there on time. Gaspacho Boulevard is gonna be just as slow. All these people rushing to get to their construction sites or stores or offices. I wouldn't mind having a desk job. Maybe someday we'll be able to prop our feet up on a desk and tell other mugs what to do all day. Sometimes I think I'm in the wrong business in the wrong city. Maybe the wrong world, but then I look at this photo of my wife and daughter, and that makes it all worth it. Jeez, don't show me that. What? Why not? I mean, why would that come up in conversation? It just did. It's gonna seem forced. What do you mean? God forbid you should get hit by a bus or some protection racket hoodlums drive by mistaking you for the fruit vendor who hasn't been intimidated by the strong arm tactics, and they decide to ventilate you. I'll probably live through it, then I'll remember how you just showed me the picture of your family, and I'll feel bad. It'll seem like you set me up for all that. You want to keep yourself emotionally isolated like, so you never have to grieve for people? I'd still grieve for you, you know. Just why make it worse with a photograph? Cute kid like that and pigtails and your very handsome wife? I think it's called a ponytail when it's only coming off the side of the head. Pigtails is when there's two. I didn't want to say nothing. I thought she was like missing one pigtail. Had one amputated or something. You're really sensitive about this stuff. It's not that. I've seen plenty of dead people and a few dead partners. It'll just seem like too much of a coincidence, you pulling out this picture of the family and then getting drilled two minutes later. I'm not gonna get drilled. It's like you said, nasty stuff happening in Parabellum City, especially this fruit war. You mean the government invading tropical countries so their cronies get a cheap supply of bananas and citrus and whatnot? No, I mean the Albanian syndicate bumping off fruit vendors who don't pay them protection money. Eat lead, apricot monger. Look out! We don't even sell apricots, you hoodlum! That was close, eh, Ted? Ted? Oh no. Oh god, Ted. You had so much to live for. Your dreams of having a desk job. The family you love so much. Ah, there's the family photo right on the dashboard where you dropped it. This is too much. This gun in my hand is brought to you by... Farmer Jacques Savings Time. Mr. Pitt's canned ham, only 43 cents for a double-sized tin. Dried Guatemalan apricots, 13 cents a package. And one pound jar of honey, 5 cents. Only at your Parabellum City Farmer Jacques. We now return to Goodbye, Honey, episode 52 of This Gun in My Hand. Falk Ziljan, undeniable hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, has subdued and begun to interrogate a rough customer known as Soup Meat. Beside them on the sidewalk is a body under a sheet, and Ted's Packard speckled with bullet holes. You'll get nothing out of me, Ziljan. I don't want anything that's in you. For the moment, I don't care about your criminal activities for the LaRouche gang. I want to find out who gunned down Ted Cotswold. I just said you'll get nothing from me. If I wanted to discuss abjection, I'd write a letter to Julia Kristova. Now talk. Abjection? Like substances transgressing body surfaces. Physical boundaries that separate self from other. The eruption of the real. Come again? You know how mortifying it seems when things that should be inside you make their way outside? Like 
when somebody spits up into the air and then catches it again in their mouth? Why does everybody get bent out of shape just because it was exposed to the air? Because spit is supposed to stay in your body and we're instinctively horrified when it gets out. Just shut up about it, I'll talk. What do you want to know? First off, how did you get the nickname Soup Meat? You flunk out of cooking school? No, it's from my last name, sous vide. Some jerk in first grade heard my name wrong during roll call and thought the teacher said soup meat. All right, what about the shooting? Did you see who did it? It was one of them Albanian mugs with a browning automatic, leaning out the window as they drove by. You recognized him? No. Then how do you know he was Albanian? You think I can't tell Albanians from normal humans? They've been out to get us Frenchies since we wouldn't acknowledge the Albanian genocide. What Albanian genocide? You know, a couple years ago, Turkey did a genocide on Albanians. France wouldn't recognize it as a genocide. The Third Republic said it was a regular war or whatever. It's been bad blood ever since. That was the Armenian genocide. Armenian, Albanian, close enough. Anyway, when they drove by blasting at us, the side of the van said Olympia Cafe, so... Oh, yeah, definitely Albanians. What's going on? Oh, Kala, I don't think you want to see this. They said something happened to Ted. Who's under the sheet? You boys didn't leave any prints, did you? You ditched the piece after you shot this guy? Mrs. Cotswold, let's move over by that bookstore. Hey, Kala, no, you don't wanna- Wait, that's sticking out under the sheet. That's Ted's. That's the sap my mother gave him. My God, is that- Kala, don't. You don't wanna see- Ah, you boys. I got nothing to worry about. Look, Kala, I'm real sorry, but the Albanians got him. They got Ted. No, no, it don't fit. Kala, not two minutes before the hit, he showed me his family picture. Him and you and the kid. No. So I kind of knew it was coming. No reason to show somebody a picture of your sweetheart or your family unless you're about to get off. Did it come up in conversation, though? He thought it was conversational. I thought it was a little forced. That's why I was worried about it. No. No, no. He probably showed the picture because it came up in conversation. I bet he was complaining about how much the photographer charged. He's always going on about things being expensive. Three cents for each print. I told him this guy was worth it. He got good backgrounds. I'm sorry, honey. He's gone. I seen it happen. I was right next to him. No. He didn't say any maudlin potting words when he left this morning. It was like any other day. What was the last thing he said to you before he left? He said, goodbye, honey. I said, have a good day. Well, there you go. That was your final farewell. No, I know he's alive because he didn't say farewell. He just said, goodbye, honey. Uh, I gotta be honest. That sounds like a farewell. No, because he never called me, honey. He calls me Carida. And then he thought that was Italian, so when he was leaving, he'd say, Arrivederci, carita. If he said that, and he lingered for a few seconds too long, as if we'd never see each other again, then I'd be worried. Then why would he say, goodbye, honey, this time? When he was walking out the door, he was looking at the grocery ad on the back of the newspaper. He pointed at a picture of a jar of honey. Probably wanted me to buy some, like, that's a good buy, honey. Yeah, that's what I meant. Cotswold! Ted! I told you he was all right. What's this all about, Ted? I'm putting together a cheesy cauliflower mushroom gougere for tonight, and I get a call from the police. This is your fault if it don't rise. I thought you was dead for sure. I was playing dead. In case the shooters came back, they wouldn't keep shooting. And while I was playing dead, uh, I fell asleep. You big goof. I dragged you out of the car onto the sidewalk. How'd you sleep through that? I ain't been sleeping right lately on account of wondering whether I'm in the wrong business, being an arm breaker for LaRouche. Plus, I get heartburn real bad. Ziljan, now that Teddy rose from the dead, you got no murder mystery to solve. You think you could give me back my Beretta and we'll be on our way? Sure. Oops, I almost gave you this gun in my hand. Instead of this other gun in my other hand. Yeah, Kala, you can head home. I'll ask LaRouche to let me off on time tonight so I can go to Julie's recital. Great. See you then. Arrivederci, querida. No! Don't say that! Have you learned nothing? What? Goodbye, honey. Episode 52 of This Gun in My Hand, the final episode of season four, was shot down and resurrected by Rob Northrup. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunandmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. How can I possibly say goodbye? with this gun in my hand.